Good morning, good children of God. Welcome as we join together this day to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I would ask you please take a look at a couple of the announcements in your bulletin. Um, one thing is a, that I want to lift up for you really well is there's an insert in there regarding the um, pizza ranch. They've changed how they're doing it this year. You can't just order it and it's going to show up. Now you have to actually put your name on a sheet in the entryway in order to order stuff. You can't do it online anymore. Um, the local pizza ranch here is not real happy with corporate that they changed how to do this because they figure it's going to, it's much easier, isn't it, just to go online and pay for it and have it show up. So, um, but these need to be into uh, the church Friday uh, night. So if, you, uh, if you're if you of a, for chicken or, I guess they have really good chicken, right? Uh, chicken or pizza, please sign up in the sign-up sheet in the uh, on the entryway. Um, otherwise, you can speak apparently speak to one of the kids. Hopefully, they'll have a sign-up sheet with them, and then that'll all be in um, as well. So, but your best bet is to sign up this morning on the sheet in the hallway. That's your best bet to make sure you get something to to eat, and that would be they'll be delivered then on Friday or Wednesday, excuse me, the seventh of uh, February. So a week from this this Wednesday, which uh, Wednesday, February 7th, that's the girl I was dating when I met Dina. That's her birthday. I, I don't forget dates very often. I used to do real well in history because I didn't forget dates. Uh, and to let you know, my mother's is the 17th, and my brother's is the second. My nephew's is also the second, Groundhog's Day. Um, so, and Dina's birthday is June 14th. And our anniversary is the 15th. So my first girlfriend's birthday was September 1st, if you really want to know. Like, what's that? My birthday is on May 17th, if anybody wants to buy me May 17th? Oh, OK. <laughs> also, it's not the bulletin, but the CEC will meet this Thursday, February 1st in the Matthew room at 6.30. So uh, I'm sorry it's not the bulletin, uh, but uh, please, please, please make note of that. Um, we're gonna be going tubing this, <laughs> uh, yeah. Hope, I don't know if we're gonna be tubing down a hill or behind a boat, um, but we're gonna be tubing Friday night um, over at um, Tyrol Basin. So in, in Mount Horb, if you're interested in going, please sign up for that. And um, we'll be able to get you a ride there. We'll take the, the, big, the big bus if we need to, or we'll take a number of cars. So um, I believe that uh, is for any, fourth grade on up. So that pretty much includes most of you. Now that's fourth grade in, in age, not necessarily in mentality. Yes? What? You can go, you can go, you can sit in the lodge. <laughs> Who wound you up this morning? Uh, there is also a sign-up sheet you'll see on the bulletin board for uh, any of the groups who might want to serve one of our uh, mid uh, midweek Lenten services, soup and salads. Please sign up. Uh, if you have a chance to do that, if your groups know that you're available one of those nights through um, through the end of March, as Easter this year is March 31st, and Ash Wednesday is two weeks from this Wednesday. So it's early this year, which also means that when we when we have our Easter dawn service, it may be a bit chillier than it has been. Of course, who knows, right? The way things have been going this year, we had one week of cold, and then now it's been nice again. Has that bothered any of you? Oh, I'm sorry, Sherm. Uh, I did call up Sherm one day because it was snowing so much. I said, "Are you happy now?" <laughs> well, if they get the if they get the trails open by tonight, I'll be happy. And he's been happy for one week. So, um, did you get some miles in? I remember one year a buddy of mine back in Pittsville bought a 
back then, $6,000 for a new snowmobile, he put 100 miles on it that year. That was it. So I know that a couple of my buddies put on a couple hundred miles here a couple weeks ago when that first weekend. They put on as many as they could. Um, so, but maybe we'll get some more snow. Maybe. So, are there any other announcements that I need to, Cindy? Cindy, would you like to talk about Maryvian Day of Giving? Thank you. Um, it's coming up February 13th, so that's Mardi Gras. Uh, you've heard of, you know, Giving, uh, giving Tuesday in December. Well, this is the Moravian Day of Giving. Last year they raised over $220,000. Um, it went to churches and field of interest funds. Uh, those field of interest funds are grants that go out, and our church actually received a grant this last year. So I encourage you all to take a look at that, ask me questions. This is the fourth year they've done it now. We got a lot of participation last year, and I'm hoping for the same this year. This year, they're all um, individual donors. It counted as one you know, one, and the churches, the four churches that have the most donors that day will receive $2,500. So, let's try for it. I think last year we had 59 donors in our church, which is awesome. So, see me for more information. Otherwise, um, the next two Sundays, I'll be here with a laptop and show you how to log on to the site if you want, but they're also accepting checks this year. As long as the check gets there by February 13th. So you have to send it in fairly soon. <laughs> How many of you have written more than 12 checks over the last year? <laughs> <laughs> and the Marie, I, I believe if you go on, there, on the website, there's a number of different agencies you can Put your put funds toward. Uh, I believe Trick will be up beyond there. Board will mission will be on there. Perhaps certain projects of the border will mission will be on there. Um, so those are, are things you can do. I will tell you that last year um, we I think we had like 59 percent of our membership gave. That's what they kind of go by. Um, we didn't come close. We had a couple of congregations that had over over 100 percent participation. Well, I think we could take most of these small churches in a rumble. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so please uh, think about that. And it doesn't matter how much you give, $25, um, $5, $10, it doesn't matter. It's participation that they're really going by. So um, please, please help out with that if you can. Are there any other announcements this morning? Would you please stand and join me in our call to worship? Sisters and brothers, arise. Arise and lift your hearts. Arise and lift your eyes. Arise and lift your voices. The of God has called us together in witness, in celebration, in struggle. Reach out toward each other. For our God reaches out toward us. Let us worship God.
Under our prayer concerns this day, uh, please keep uh, the Brandle family in your prayers as uh, Tracy's dad, Ken, passed away. And that's spelled, Britsky spelled wrong, isn't it? Yes. How's that, how's that spelled, Tracy? She didn't even look. Uh, What's that? There's just a K after the D. Okay. Okay, there. So if you want to make that editorial announcement, um, are in there if you like to, but uh, his a service celebrating his life was held yesterday at Trinity uh, Congregation up on Pine Street. Um, Elaine goes in this week, Steve. Where you at? The following week. The following week. What's she going in, going to go back in for? Okay. Okay. So she'll be headed back to Mayo. She'll be heading up to Mayo in Rochester. Um, for uh, another surgery to uh, deal with some cancer. So please keep them in your prayers. Um, also, uh, the, I know Dakota mentioned it last, last weekend for you. Uh, my uncle Teddy uh, passed away last Saturday morning at the age of 79 um, of cardiac issues in, and uh, he was in lacrosse. Um, apparently, um, he, uh, was having some issues at the hospital. They thought he was doing much better, and um, they were. My cousin told me they were putting a catheter in because he couldn't tell when he needed to go to the bathroom. And as she was doing that, he kind of slumped over, and she thought he'd fallen asleep. Now I'd like to know: Has any man in here ever fallen asleep while a catheter is being inserted? Um, but at that point, all of the alarms started going off. Um, he had had a massive heart attack the week before that caused damage to about 75% of his heart. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of damage to his heart. Um, he liked to fish, he liked to be outdoors doing stuff, and the, my fear was he probably wouldn't have been able to go about five feet without having to stop and rest. So um, unfortunately, um, that leaves my, out of the five children my grandparents had, my dad, who is the oldest, and my aunt, who is the youngest. And there's 21 years between them. 
Um, and everyone in between, uh, my aunt and two uncles have now passed away. Um, so uh, please keep my dad in your prayers as well, as I know it affects him. Um, being that he is uh, now older, my grandmother passed away at the age of 80 and grandpa at the age of 71. So dad is well aware that he is living on borrowed time. Um, but unfortunately, as we all know, um, my uncle had a lot of miles on him. Um, lived a pretty good life. He had his own band at one time. Um, Ted Sobeck and the Gringos. <laughs> they actually recorded a song on one record, uh, I think they had a 45 record uh, that they played, um, they did for, so, but uh, yeah, a lot, lot of busyness in his life. He did, I, I mentioned to uh, Tyler, that I found out this week that my uncle was a track star for Seneca High School. Um, he went to state in the long jump, uh, and uh, at sectionals he won the uh, 110 low hurdles and the, um, and the long jump and was on the 880 relay team. My dad didn't know that. And I said to my dad, well, dad, that happened in May of 62. My sister was born in April of 62, which gave my father three kids in four years. I don't know why my dad wasn't focused on my uncle uh, winning that stuff. So, but uh, please keep the family in your prayers as we deal with that this week. His service will be this Friday at Ryan's in uh, Madison. Um, I'll be doing that service and then um, the committal will be over near Madison West High School um, on Tuesday afternoon. So, or excuse me, Friday afternoon. So um, please keep the family in your prayers. Are there other prayer concerns or joys this morning? Jane? Well, when, when they came in, I know that there is some COVID going on around in Peru and, and where our volunteers are. And also, Dewey, Dewey Latch is really under the weather today. So. Dewey's under the weather because, yeah, if he wasn't, he'd be here this morning. So, um, so Dewey, and you said there's, there's COVID going around Peru, which is where the strikes are at at this point. With the, and there's actually a bunch of folks down there, right, doing um, eyeglass, eyeglass stuff, right? Um, so please keep them in your prayers as well um, as they go down there and hopefully get home, are able to come home. Um, who knows if it's, if it's COVID, they, I don't know what the government does regarding that. So are there any other concerns or joys this morning? Would you please then join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we come to you today in celebration. Celebration for those in our lives who've made a difference. Celebration for those who have gone before us into the heavenly realm. We thank you, Lord, Lord for the life that you give to us for the opportunities we have to love and to be loved, to showcase your grace throughout this world. We ask, Lord, your blessings upon those of our friends, our families that we know to be in need of your care. Some healing of the spirit, some perhaps a healing of the body. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us each and every day and that you will guide us in the way you wish us to go. Lord, may we put our trust in you. May we put everything we have, knowing that you will do what is right for us. Bless us, Lord, this day. Amen. May we bring to God our morning tithes and offerings.
Lord, we thank you for the blessings you give to each of us in life. This day we are aware that our, our blessings we give to you go far beyond these walls. They go to help people all around this world. They go to help those who are working tirelessly for the sake of the gospel, that others may come to know you as their Lord and Savior. We ask, Lord, that you multiply these gifts as only you can with your love and send them as you send us out into your world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. For the past couple of years, we've not, uh, we, we haven't met uh, as a memorial committee to, to put memorials in. Um, and then there was also some tracking down of folks to find out what they wanted to do with those memorials. So today we have a long list um, over the last three years of, of folks who have um, given to our congregation. And I'm sure as I read through some of the names of folks that have given them, they will bring those folks back to your memory. Today we dedicate the following gifts to the glory of God in memory of these loved ones. Kitchen stove and hood, Pat Yan, Ella Michaelis, Joyce Stockfish. The kitchen fund, Joyce Stockfish, Myrtle Mashi, Edith Kotwitz, Maurice Kotwitz, and Carol Wolfgram. Disinfecting system, Myrtle Mashi. Camp Memorial Scholarships, Chuck Roloff, Carol Hofer, Lauren Hofer, Patty Daynert, Loretta Reed, Irene Kirst, the General College Scholarship Fund, Everett Rocky Rothbart, and Michael Boddy, the Youth Mission Fund trip, Jacob Cruel, Sunday School Memorials, Audrey, Audrey Ann Stockfish Bannock, and Sarah Hooper, Sunday School Handbells, Myrtle Mashi, Candles for Christmas Eve, Dylan Shinecki, Choir Room Fund, Jerry Jenkins. Does that surprise anybody? Praise Band Memorial, Connie Mesmer, Organ Repair Fund, Sue Cop Copl Copeland, Richard Daynert, and Irene Kirst. Air Conditioning, I'll just pause. <laughs> Ginny Fry, Orion Strasberg, who at the time of her passing was our oldest member at 103, almost 104. Uh, Larry Falk, Dorothy Hartwig, Nancy Hine, Don Hine, Edith Kotwitz, Maurice Kotwitz, Elaine Albright, Wayne Hills, Carol Wolfgram, and Andrea Geyer. Outdoor Maintenance Fund, Beverly Doomer, or Dummer, I guess it is, Gloria Radloff, and Doug Woleen. Barbara Albrecht, Wayne Caston, Jan Mess, Roger Huffman, Gordon Kotwitz, Alta Kotwitz, Andrea Geyer, Todd Yandre, and Anonymous. Church Grounds, Landscaping, and Trees. K. Cretney Bailing. Is that right, Cretney? It's, it's been a while. Um, AED Batteries and Supplies, that's our automatic defibrillator, Dorothy Hartwig. The Moravian Women, Marvin Barriedel, Lauren Hofer, Barb Went. Music Memorial Fund, Stanley Wolf, who was a member out at Momry, I believe. Um, right, I don't think he ever transferred, his wife transferred a membership here, but he did not, he stayed at Momry. Um, Senior Choir Memorial, Barb Went. The 2023 Shortfall, James Yandre, Jim Bohr, Mark Court Manor, Bill Kiesling, Evelyn Johnston, Mount Morris Building Fund, Bill Kiesling, and Board of World Mission Water Filter Project, Irene Kirst. Please join me in the prayer. By the power of the one who calls us by name, we praise God for the faithfulness of those saints who have gone before us 
who lived with hope and died with faith in God's eternal mercy. We dedicate these gifts offered to enhance the life and witness of this congregation to the glory of God and in loving memory of these, our brothers and sisters. Gracious Lord and God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we thank you for your faithful servants whose memory we honor this day. We give thanks for their life and witness and how their example challenges us to faithfulness. Bless all who have given gifts in memory of these loved ones and keep us in everlasting fellowship with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. first lesson today comes from the Gospel of Mark, from the fifth chapter. When Jesus had crossed again in the boat to the other side, a great crowd gathered around him, and he was by the sea. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue, named Jairus, came, and when he saw him, fell at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. So he went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all that she had, and she was no better, but rather grew worse. She had heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothes, I'll be made well. Immediately her hemorrhage stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say who touched me? He looked at all around to see who had done it. But the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came in fear and trembling fell down before him and told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your disease. While he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But overhearing what they said, Jesus said to the leader of the synagogue, Do not fear, only believe. He allowed no one to follow him except Peter, James, and John, the brother of James. When they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, he saw a commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. When he had entered, he said to them, Why do you make a commotion and weep? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. Then he put them all outside and took the child's father and mother and those who were with him and went in where the child was. He took her by the hand and said to her, Talitha kum, which means little girl, get up. And immediately the girl got up and began to walk about. She was about 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. He strictly ordered them that no one should know this and told them to give her something to eat.
our congregational text, which was drawn uh, the first on, on January 7th, comes from Proverbs 30, verse 8. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need. I'm a contextual person. I like to know, oops. There we go. I like to know exactly what context this was written in. I mean, it's a pretty good piece, right? Give me the food I need. Let me share with you the rest of the proverb. <sighs> the oracle, the words of Agur, son of Jukka, an oracle. Thus says the man, I am weary, O God. I am weary, O God. How can I prevail? Surely I am too stupid to be human. I do not have human understanding. I have not learned wisdom, nor have I knowledge of the holy ones. Who has ascended to heaven and come down? Who has gathered the wind in the hollow of the hand? Who has wrapped up waters in a garment? Who has established all the ends of the earth? What is the person's name? And what is the name of the person's child? Surely you know. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Do not add to his words, or else he will rebuke you, and you'll be found a liar. Two things I ask of you. Do not deny them to me before I die. And here comes our verse. Remove from, far from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with the food that I need, or I shall be full and deny you. And say, who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal and profane the name of my God. Do not slander a servant to a master, or the servant will curse you, and you will be held guilty. There are those who curse their fathers and do not bless their mothers. There are those who are pure in their own eyes, yet are not cleansed of their filthiness. There are those, how lofty are their eyes, how high their eyelids lift. There are those whose teeth are swords whose teeth are knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, the needy from among mortals. If you have been foolish exalting yourself, or if you have been devising evil, put your hand in your mouth. For as pressing milk produces curds, and pressing the nose produces blood, so pressing anger produces strife. Wow, that was cheerful, wasn't it? Um, I believe it or not, I've probably done more, uh, did more reading this week on this passage than I've done in a long time on, on passages I've spoken on because it's like, this is not necessarily an oracle that just lends itself to a wonderful preaching moment, right? But first off, Agur here and his father, Jaka, they're found nowhere else in the Bible. Uh, Psalm 30 and 31 seem to be an addition added on to the book of Proverbs that we all think, or at least many scholars think, Solomon wrote. Reason being is because it doesn't sound that way in the English, but in the original Hebrew, especially in chapter 30, which this is, the word that he uses for God is El rather than Elohim. There's different words he uses for God. There's different words he uses for other things. They actually match up much more with the book of Job than they do with the rest of the, of the, of the Proverbs. And he goes on some, some bizarre kind of things going on there. There's also a part I didn't read, which is called the poem of threes and fours. Three things are too much, four even more. And he goes on to tell you what those three and four things are that he can't understand, and there's, there's a whole piece in there about that, but I'm not going to go into that. But the words here, I am too stupid to be human. Actually, in the, in the uh, Old King James, it says, I am too brutish, which almost makes it sound majestic, doesn't it? I'm brutish rather than saying, I'm stupid. But basically what he's trying to get across to people, and, and I know it's, the words seem very harsh, but what he's trying to get across is that God is much wiser than we are. 
And he's saying, God is much wiser than I. I can't understand these things. Which in reality is true, correct? I mean, we do our best to read into Scripture. We do our best to, to learn about God. But ultimately, we still don't know the wisdom of God. Because we know. Why is it that some wonderful people are taken from us young and some rotten people seem to live forever? I had a gentleman back in Minnesota. Um, my first fall there, he had a brain tumor. And they gave him about a month to live. Well, actually, they found out that doing some chemo on him, it shrunk it and kept him going. Now, they still gave him kind of short term. He kept going beyond those dates. He actually lost his, one of his arms because of the flesh-eating bacteria, because his body didn't have the ability to fight it off. And he kept going. On and on, he had other difficulties, lost the gallbladder, lost this, continued going. His wife found out November, 10 years later, that she had pancreatic cancer. She was gone right after the first of the year. I mean, the, that morning of the first of the year. He lived on almost another year. I told people, I didn't say this at the, mess, at the funeral, by the way, I told people that heaven didn't want him and the devil was scared of him. <laughs> and people told me, you might not be far from the truth. But why does that happen? We don't know. What is the wisdom of God that allows those things to happen? That's what Agar is trying to get across. We think sometimes we're as wise as God, but really we're not. We lift ourselves up, but yet we're not really, we can't be God as much as we'd like. The piece here from verses 7 to 9, which includes our verse, is a, is, is a wonderful little prayer. Two things I ask of you. Do not deny them to me before I die. Remove from me falsehood and lying. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me the food that I need, or I shall be full and deny you, and say, Who is the Lord? Or I shall be poor and steal and profane God's name. When things are going well, we put it on ourselves. Right? We're doing this. We've done all the accomplishments. When things are not going well, we say God has forsaken us. The writer is trying to get across to us to understand that God will give us enough. God will give us what we need. Now, all of us, of course, are happy with what we have. Correct? Who's got a television that's over 85 inches? Anybody? We'll keep going down. 80 inches, 75. Thank you, Mike. You notice, you notice, you notice Mike's that way in the back so he can let, raise his hand that nobody notices. Right? Um, you know, I can remember my, our first television set was 27 inches. You know, across the screen this way. And of course it was about yay thick, right, in the back? Because none of us need new televisions, right? As a rule. How about cars? Anybody, how many of you are really jealous of the little orange car that I drive? Okay. Is it just because it's orange? What? Because it's mine. Yes, I know all the kids that have their driver's license are just saying, man, I wish I had a car like Pastor Dave. I wish I had a small car that looks like, how in the heck does he get in and out of it? I had a buddy back in Altura, got in that car when I first bought it. <clears throat> he was six foot four. He pushed the seat back as far as it was go. He was looking out the back window. <clears throat> but we do have to keep up, right? 
whether it be maybe a vehicle, maybe it be a house, may it be certain things. How many of us are addicted to gadgets? Got to have the latest, greatest gadget. How about that thing you carry in your pocket? Burke Johnson, former uh, pastor at uh, Surgeon Bay, actually married Dean and I, was district president, provincial president, said one time that he felt the worst thing in the world was a cellular phone. Because you know what it means? You can never be out of touch. And of course, all of us still carry flip phones, right? Right, Kenny? Kenny actually does carry a flip phone yet. I mean, my phone, my phone I have someplace over here, my phone has got more power in it than my first computer did. And I can go online, my first computer couldn't go online. We all want to have more. We all think we should have more, <clears throat> but yet God gives us enough. God gives us what we need. The food that I require. And of course, food, right? Metaphor for the blessings of God. What God gives to us. As a rule, God sends to us, this is as a congregation, sends to us people who have a need. People who have a need to be fed, one way or another. Perhaps for some it is real food. For others, it is the spiritual food that God offers. Our purpose as a congregation is to feed them. Our purpose is to feed them. I'll say it one more time. Our purpose is to feed them. How can we feed them if we can't love each other? How can we feed them if we can't show them love? How can we feed them if we can't show each other grace? How can we feed them if we can't show each other grace? How do we feed them grace? How do we do the things we are called to do if we can't do them amongst ourselves? Those words in there at the end of that first part are kind of tough. There are those whose teeth are swords, whose teeth are knives. The words out of our mouths betray us at times. It is just our actions, sometimes it is our words. If you have been foolish exalting yourself, or if you have been devising evil, put your hand on your mouth. And in this last piece, does anyone understand this last piece? For as pressing milk produces curds, and pressing the nose produces blood, so pressing anger produces strife. I can press my nose, it's not going to bleed. But I'd be willing to bet if a couple of you pressed my nose, it might bleed. But we as a congregation have to understand that we are, we need to be one. Does that mean we need to agree on everything? No. But in order to feed the rest of the people, and let's face it, the world needs us to feed people. How do we feed them if we can't even help each other? That's not easy. There's a story long ago about um, 
one of those old time rescue crews. Uh, ones that rescued guys off of ships. If you've ever read uh, stories of some of the, uh, the storms of the Great Lakes, especially Superior, um, up toward Duluth and down the coast, there would be places where people would go out and help to rescue sailors in storms if possible. Uh, the old adage was, I remember seeing some place that um, you have to go out, you don't have to come back. Um, I don't know if that's, is that the phrase of the Coast Guard, Bob? Is it? No, okay. <laughs> I know you're not, coast, you're not a coastie, but, um, but, but, but the, the, the one thing went to, the, went to the, they built their little thing, they had their, they had their club there, and they had rescue boats, and they trained and did their things, and after a while, it began to be more and more of a club than it was a rescue. It, it got to be the point where they didn't want to bring in people who had, been, uh, who had been on shipwrecks because they were dirty and wet. They might, they might get the carpet wet. And so eventually, they became just a country club and not a rescue. And down the coast, apparently, is a, is a group of country clubs and no rescue because they forgot what their mission was. God will give us what we need. I know that we lament the loss of members. And um, I will tell you that I, probably more than you, lament that whether it be through death or through other things. We lament the fact that our Sunday school doesn't have as many children as it used to. We lament that. And sometimes I think perhaps it handcuffs us and doesn't allow us to move forward. We need to instead Realize that God will give us the food we need. If, and only if, we are doing what God has asked us as a congregation to do. Not necessarily individuals in the congregation, but as a whole. All of us. Now, people will say, that um, it, uh, some will say that the pastor's job is to bring people into the church. No. Your job is to bring them to the church. My job is to try to keep them. My job is to try to teach them to help build up the kingdom of God in them so that they can go out and teach others. Your job, your job is to show them the love and grace that they want to be a part of this community. God will feed us. Now, it doesn't always feel like that, does it? But it will happen. It will happen if we allow God to lead us. Would you please join me in prayer? Lord, it is very easy to sit back and wait for someone else to act rather than doing it ourselves. It is far easier to place the burden on someone else than it is to actually do the work ourselves. It is far easier to allow someone else to be the person who loves, who gives grace and powers. But Lord, that is the task you have given to all of us. That others may know you through what we do, through what we say. 
that others may come to know you through our hearts. Lord, we are your children. Lead us in the way that we should go. Empower us for the work ahead. Let us show your love and give food to those who are hungry in this world. Amen. Would you please, please stand. <laughs> I do encourage all of you to come back to Fellowship Hall for uh, a luncheon, and we'll hopefully get started uh, with church council um, by noon. Um, those who are on Zoom, uh, we will stop recording the service when I'm through shooting my mouth off, um, when we're through with that, and stay on there or come back in an hour, it'll still be going, and you can be able to listen in to church council. And now, my friends, go out into this world. Be the blessing God has blessed you with. Be the blessing to those who need to hear, to feel the love of our God. Be the blessing, not only for those around you, but for the world. Go now to love and to serve our Lord. Amen. <laughs>